Hi folks, and welcome back to Conan Exiles. This is episode 9 of the Beginner's Guide 2023. And in the last episode, we were checking out the purple lotus orbs, and we managed to get ourselves a couple of our new friends here. And you can see this guy here, the Relic Hunter Treasure Seeker. I've, I've done a little bit of leveling on him, he's up to level 4. He's wearing the Barakan Reaver outfit. Uh, this is because he's a... he is an agility fighter, but there isn't any actual agility bonus weapons in the base game until you get to level 50. Uh, the only agility weapon bonus armor that you can get for the heavy armor is uh, from DLCs, so we're, we're missing that out. We've given them that because that gives them health, plus health, no, plus 20 health per piece by normally, but with our little armor or one that we've got, give them a little bit of extra armor and a little bit of extra health bonus on, on each piece. So, boost his health up a little bit, he's got a reasonable amount of armor level, and we give him a katana, which is a nice two-handed agility weapon. Got him up to level 4, so he's now at 2,166, so still not brilliant, but, but not too bad. But, I think I said at the beginning of the last episode that what I like to do in the sort of next stage typically would be to go into Sinner's Refuge, go right to the back of Sinner's Refuge. We were in there before looking for uh, the Brimstone in the Steelsmith episode, but right at the back you've almost got a guaranteed tier 4 crafter. Uh, sometimes it is a priest, but most of the time it's a tier 4 crafter. And I tend to farm that to get a whole bunch of crafters from there before we move base. But with the new Purple Lotus Orb system, and we we can go to Sepa Maru and we can get a whole bunch of crafters from there. We got a we got a smelter there in the last episode. Much easier than you can in Sinner's Refuge. So I think we're just going to skip ahead and we're going to go and build ourselves our main base. And I'm going to take you to the location. It's the same location I built my main base in the previous Beginners series. It's just my favourite location, which is up around here. And I'll show you why it's my favourite location when we get there. But before we do that, since we're doing a bit of building, we've got a journey step that we really need to look into, which is Mason. So... Uh, I'm not 100% sure, this seems to be a bit of a strange option, but there's a, a few weird things going on here for the basic mason. But if we look at this, the first thing we have to do is switch journey. The first thing is unlock carpenter, we've done that already. We've got to unlock the fireball cauldron, we've done that already. The next thing we need to do is craft stone consolidant. So if we nip inside, that's crafted in the fireball cauldron, there we go, and this is stone consolidant here and it needs plant fibre and resin. So I think we've put all the resin here. So you get resin from harvesting trees with a pick when you're getting bark, and you'll also get resin as a, as a byproduct. Uh, there is another way of getting it, which we'll come to later on, but if we hit, we get bark, bark, resin. Here we go, get a little bit. Uh, we also need fibre. Let's grab a bunch of this. I'm a, a bit confused why this basic um, mason journey step is asking you to make stone consolidant, because that's for making hardened brick, and that's for tier 3 buildings, not tier 2. But we'll go along with it, we'll just do it anyway. So we'll put that in there, we'll put that in there, and we'll make... We'll just make one for the moment, because one gives you five consolidant. There we go. And we'll need that. The next step is to craft hardened brick. So, hardened brick is stone consolidant and normal brick. So, hit play. And there we go, hardened brick. We've managed to pick up one previously. So, we just put that in our inventory. There we go, craft hardened brick. Next one is the dried preserves knowledge. I don't think we've done that. We haven't done that. So, we go to knowledge, go to survival. And then we scroll down. There is dried preserves. The prerequisite is the primitive cook, so we've got that, so we can learn that. And that allows us to make the dryer. So we're going to need our 
construction hammer. We go to, let me see, where is that in general? There it is. Dryer. So it needs 20 shaped wood and 10 twine. So, shaped wood. 20. 10 twine. And this is a kind of multifunctional... It's, oh, it's kind of hard to really call it a bench, but... Um, apparatus, we'll call it. Because not only can you dry wood, you can dry food on it as well. So it's actually asking us to craft dry wood in the dryer. So the dryer uses bark as fuel. It says there, put food in it to get dried food, but we can also put wood in it to dry wood. So we nip outside. There's some trees. Let's just grab a tree. Go and let's just grab a couple more bits of bark. Oh, there's a little hyena baby walking up the hill. We'll throw it in here. So we'll put our bark in and our wood in and hit play, and it's got to start making dried wood. We'll put the rest of the resin we got, we'll throw them out. Throw the branches in there. Uh, we'll throw the seeds in there. Oh, a lot of meat that's went off. Let's give the rest of the meat to him. There you go. Using that stake to level up his vitality. Right, so we take that dried wood. We've done that. So now it's saying unlock journeyman mason. So knowledge construction and journeyman mason is the tier two building pieces so apprentice is tier one which gives you the sandstone stuff if you have the dlc of isla sipta you'll also unlock automatically the salvager stuff that gives you the floatsome stuff so this is all tier one journeyman mason is tier two we'll unlock that and you see that stone brick so it's the next level up from from there and there is also where is insulated wood? There it is. Insulated wood wedge foundation. They're both tier two uh, materials. And then they've got stairs and gates and roofs and stuff like that to go with it. Right, so craft insulated wood. So insulated wood is in here. We've now unlocked that. And it needs dry wood and some resin. So we'll put some dry wood in. We'll take two pieces of resin. Put that in there, and craft. So dry, uh, insulated wood is, is used for some of the tier 2 building, and it's also used for a few benches as well. Okay, craft and iron reinforcement. Well, we've done lots of that. I've actually done a lot of that off camera. So if I just pick that out. But again, iron reinforcement is just an iron bar. The improved blacksmith means it's one iron bar. If you've got the basic blacksmith's bench, it'll be two iron bars to make one iron reinforcement. So we've learned that. Now we need to build or upgrade a building piece. So to do that, let's take a bit of brick. So if we go to our building pieces, we've now got stone brick, the tier two. So we need 10 brick four shaped wood and seven iron reinforcements to make one of them. We need seven of them. And we need, what was it, four? Right, and now we can, oh, building pieces, stone brick. So we can upgrade that piece there to stone brick. And there we go. We have completed that stage and that is that now upgraded did we get we got the materials back from the the previous one and since i don't need this down here i'm actually just going to destroy it copy that and paste the original one back in again and get our get our brick and shape wood back so let's put that back in there let's put that back in there let's put that back in there Right, what's next? Unlock the water well knowledge. So, knowledge, survival, and then if we scroll down to near the bottom, 
we have water well. So water well is really handy because if you place a water well anywhere in the world, it'll slowly fill up with water and you can drink and fill your water skins and your orbs and stuff like that from there. So if you're in a base location that is nowhere near any water, you can place a water well or a, a large water well or a pool of refreshment, these extra fancier ones here, and you'll be able to get water no matter where you are, in the, in the desert or in the snow or whatever. But place a water well, drink from a well, so we'll have to build it first, so they're actually quite expensive, I seem to remember. Now, what does that come under? A general? No. Alchemy? No. Decorations? Well, here we go. So it needs 60 brick, 60 shape wood, 50 tar, and 42 iron reinforcements. There we go. So... Eh... Uh, is it 50 tar? 60 brick. 60 shape wood. And 42. I'm sure there used to be a lot more than 42 iron reinforcements. They must have nerfed that down a bit. Is that right? Yep, yeah, it's green now. So if we just pop outside, you can spin it around and you can place it and if you have a look in the bottom of it it'll slowly start filling up with water there it goes so there's the there's the first layer it'll keep filling up I'll say because if I drink from that it'll go down that'll just keep filling up near the top and it'll it'll stay filled up pretty well so if I hit that we can drink from it and we've completed that step, and for that step we've got some supply materials. So that should have unlocked Master Mason, and this is the one... So in here it asked us to craft hardened brick, but I think that should really have just been brick, because you only need hardened brick for the Master Mason to make the, the Tier 3 stuff. Uh, so it also needs uh, so it uses steel reinforcements instead of iron. It still uses shape wood, but it uses hardened brick for the tier three. Uh, and then it also goes into siege cauldron. But we'll worry about it at a later date. We've we've learned that now. Right. So I'm now going to destroy this again because we don't need it here because there's water everywhere. So get our materials back. So what we need to do is we need to. I've I've done quite a bit of grinding off off camera. I've got a bunch of brick, uh, I've got a bunch of iron reinforcements, I've got a bunch of shaped wood, and that's all the stuff that we'll need to build a tier 2 base at the location that we're, we're looking at. So for those that don't know, the map is kind of split into different areas. So first of all, New River down here is a no purge zone. So even if your purge meter fills right up and your base is down here, you won't get a purge down here at all. As you move a bit outside here and outside here and slightly slightly further north, you're still in zone 1. So you'll get zone 1 purges, which are not too serious, and, and a tier 1 base will be able to withstand those purges. Then you've got this sort of section here in the middle, so going from like up here where this wall is here into the jungle and back out again here. This is a tier 2 area. And you basically need tier 2 bases to withstand the damage of a purge. And then finally, you've got the north, and up, sort of kind of above this wall roughly, up into the volcano. And that's a tier 3 area that needs tier 3 bases, the highest HP building pieces, to withstand purges from the, the mobs that you'll get attacked by up there. Now I'm saying all this when we're in Chapter 1 of Age of War. Because come Chapter 2 of Age of War, in a, in a few months' time, as of recording, the purge system is changing completely. And as this moment in time, we don't know what it's going to be. It's going to be a system where you call in a purge based on the tre treasure that you've gathered. But what that will actually mean in reality, we don't know. The uh, one thing we do know is that people who don't want a purge just don't call one in. It's not... A mandatory thing anymore at the moment 
my purge meter, everything I do in the game adds to my purge meter. And when the purge meter hits this first white line here, at any point in time after that, they, they will attack you randomly. But in chapter 2, all we know is that that won't be the case and you will use your treasure that you've gathered in your treasure coffer, which we'll come to eventually, um, and you choose to call in a purge and the difficulty of the purge you'll call in will be based on how much treasure you have. But other than that, how else purges work, we have no clue as of recording. If you're watching this in the future, it'll all be changed and uh, I'm sure there'll be an updated video to, to tell you all about it. But as this moment, we don't know. So we're going to go up, we're going to build a tier 2 building in roughly the same location as we built the previous tier 2 in the last series. Um, but we'll, we'll do a different design this time and we'll see how we go. So I'm going to go and fill up the horse and probably I will take the shale back just because he has 10 uh, carry slots whereas you have only got five. So I'll fill up the horse, I'll fill up this guy, and then we'll head up to Sepamaru and we'll, we'll find the location outside Sepamaru and I'll bring you back when I get there. Okay, see you soon. Okay, welcome back. So we're at the entrance to the temple quarter on Sepamaru. So if I bring up the map here, we've Come from here, we ran along the river, we crossed the river here, came along here, right along the river, and then we're up the snake path up here, ran up along here, past the edge of the unnamed city, and so all around here is the ghost fence that will kill you. These these bits here are the, the pylons. So we've stuck to here, followed the unnamed city, got to here, along the jawbone, and then this is where the first rhinos are, there is where we were in Sepamaru last time, that was the first entrance you come across. But we bypassed that, went round the corner, and we've come here to the temple quarter, and we're just outside the temple quarter to, to let you see where we're going, and we're heading over to the other side. So make sure any friend or creature you have with you, make sure they're on at least guard me or do nothing, so that they don't go attacking everybody in here. And we'll just ride through. We're not going to tempt fate by looking at what the, the various crafters around here are at the moment, because we're not in a situation to be able to tame any of them. we we'll come out the other side, and this space over here, this is the location that we crafted the pyramid base in our previous series. So this location is my, is my favourite location to build a base. So let's take this guy out. Oh, I've got a short sword, so I can't. Go on, take him out. Oh, you're not doing much damage at all, are you? He's really not doing much damage. There we go. Right. So, why is this my favourite location? Because it has everything. It has trees. All along the edge here, it has iron and stone, so iron and stone nodes all the way along here, all the way along here. There's more iron and stone up that ridge there, all the way down there, there is loads and loads down there, there is coal here. Go back this way, there is a an obelisk down here, so that's Kalel's stronghold, just that's the entrance there, it's just in there. And down you can just see the purple smoke in the distance, there is an obelisk. So once we have map rooms and we can teleport with map rooms, that's a location you can teleport to. Then you just have to run up the hill and you're at the base. More coal, more stone, plenty of fibre, more coal, lots more iron, there's tons of iron up there. There is water down here. There is a bunch of shalebacks and stuff there to level up on and also to harvest for food. Uh, there's a whole bunch more around here and there's more iron and coal and stuff around here. So loads of stuff. Everything you could possibly need is all here. Right, so 
and it's right beside Sepa Maru, so we've got a nice option to get ourselves a whole bunch of crafters and uh, friends to, to help us out from Sepa Maru, which is just there. So this this upper location here is where I built the pyramid, right right here, right here. I'm not going to build a pyramid here this time. I'm actually going to build my main base down there. However, I do want to join it up to this part because later on we might expand up here. So we'll, we will actually do a little bit of building up here. But before we do anything, I just want to show you. Uh, let me just nip into admin mode so I can show you the different building materials. So if I go into creative mode, and then bring up my torch, my torch, my hammer. Go to building pieces. So it's sandstone. This is tier one. Let's build that. Let's just get rid of you for the moment. So there's a sandstone foundation. You've also got. Uh, we spoke about before. You've got uh, flotsam is also a tier one. If you have the the Isle of Sipta DLC. The next level up is tier two, which is stone brick. So let's put a stone brick foundation and also insulated wood like that. And then let me see black ice and reinforced stone are the two tier three. Can you guys get out of the way? Now, what we'll need to show you the information on these is a repair hammer. So let's exit creative mode a repair hammer there is 20 wood and 5 twine right which one of you have got the twine you so 5 twine and let's grab a little bit of wood there we go and then we can make a repair hammer which, unsurprisingly, is used to repair buildings. But the other thing it does is if we place that in our... No, not that. This in here. We can see the details. So you can see here that it, it doesn't need any repair. Um, it says zero stone and zero wood to repair because it's at 100% durability at the moment with an HP of 10,000 HP. Uh, it also has a stability of 100 and a stability loss of 1, which we'll come to later. The Flotsam also has 10,000 HP and also has a stability of 100. Tier 2, it jumps from 10,000 HP to 75,000 HP. Much, much, much more. There's the insulated wood, also 75,000. The tier three is 100,000, so it's only a 25,000 more. So it's not quite as big a jump, but it's still much more HP than the tier two. And there is the reinforced. These are the standard, the standard ones apart from the flops, and that's, but there is only one type of standard game, but that's the standard if you've got the flops and the Isla Sipta DLC. But these ones here, stone brick tier 2, insulated wood tier 2, black ice, reinforced tier 3, and the reinforced stone. So 100,000, 100,000, 75, 75. So that's why you need higher tier building materials to build in the higher areas, because it's got much more HP. Right, the next thing I need to explain to you is one of the basics of building is the stability system. So let me just cut here while I just go and prepare quickly a demo of the stability system. Okay, see you very soon. Okay, we're back again and I've got a little area that I can demo stability for you. So if we go back to our repair hammer, you can see stability for these foundations is 100% for all of them. They're touching the ground, so therefore they have 100% stability, no problem at all. Anything coming vertically straight off of a foundation, like this wall, also has 100% stability, because it's straight down the ground. 
But when we start hanging things off of there, for example, if we hang a ceiling piece, where are the ceiling pieces? There, we put a ceiling piece. You can see at the moment it's green. Okay. And if we look at it, it has 80 stability. So that's dropped by 20. And what will happen is each one that goes out will drop by a further 20. So if we go back to that, and you can see it's now yellow. Six. It has stability of 60. Put another one. It's kind of a darker orange. It has stability of 40. And another one. It has a stability of 20. And if we try and put another one, it doesn't work. We can't put another one. We've got zero stability for that other one, so it doesn't work. So, a way of getting rid of that, around that, is to prop that up. And you can prop it up either by using another wall here. And then that'll give... So that's now got 100 stability from here. That goes to 80, 60. This one has got 80 from here and 60 from there. So that'll work fine. Another option, instead of using a wall, is you can use a pillar. And there's the pillar. It connects to that one there. That pillar has 100% stability, so does that ceiling. So that one now has 80, 60, 80, and that works that way. The only problem is you've then got to have a pillar every four, or a pillar or a wall every four foundations, which kind of limits the size of buildings you can do. So if we take that down, but the other thing you can do is you could always build from the other side. So there's a wall with 100% stability. We get a ceiling and put it on there again. It's green, so that will have 80. There it goes, 80. Put another one that has 60. It does. Another one that has 40. And now this one should have 20. And if we place it, it's red. It's 20, but we've now spanned 8 one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we have a stable ceiling spanning a whole eight foundations. So that's something that has to be taken into consideration with any building you do. That once you move off the ground, you're going to start having stability issues. There are, there are options in the setting. You can switch that off if, if you... If you don't want it, they allow you to have more fantastical builds, but to give it a bit more realism, the stability system has to be taken into account. So you either need to put walls or pillars to hold things up, or that's a way of doing it. If you come in from both ends, you can you can span eight foundations wide and have, have a solid foundation. Okay, right. I'm now going to dismantle all this, and then we'll be ready to start building, building our actual base. Okay. See you very soon. Okay, so we're ready to start our build. And as I mentioned before, I will probably want to expand up into this flat area later on. So in order to make sure everything snaps correctly and lines up correctly, I'm actually going to start with the foundation up here. And then I'll bring it down and we'll start building in that area down there. I've, I've cleared a little bit of rock and stone. Uh, let's use let's use some of that to, to get building with. Right. So what we want to do, I'm just going to use the cheap building materials at the moment because uh, let's see, you want to start about here and I want to kind of aim out that way. So let's bring that up a little bit and let's just check kind of goes in a little bit but yeah that that should be okay okay right so we can bring them back again get that materials back and then this is our snap point that we're coming off of so down there and now we need to go down here and we can bring it all the way down Let's see about there. Oh, that's not actually going to be quite high enough to, to 
get over that little lump there. So we're going to have to start that again. So we'll take them down. Got a, a little bit fiddly to start with, but once we've got our base so solution sorted, it'll be fine after that. So we need this one here to be a bit higher. So let's bring that up to maybe that height. Let's see how that goes. Uh, that's still a little bit... But honestly, I think that'll probably be okay. So I'm going to be coming out here. So my basic design is we're going to have an area in the middle. Uh, maybe 10 or 12. 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh, I've run out of materials. Great. Great start. Should have really put this chest downstairs. That would have been more useful. Let's take all that. In fact, let's take some of the stuff out of you. You. And we'll use you to carry stuff. But come over here. Come on. Come on. A little bit closer. Right, so we'll take uh, take that out of you and put that in here. And then we'll give you that. And then we'll... Why am I still so heavy? Oh, so I've still got 500 iron reinforcements on me, that's why. Put that there. Right, come on down. <gasps> There he goes. Right, so let's try that again. Half of that, and half of that. So, where did we get to? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's start with that. With a square. And then we'll get the rest of the stone and wood off of him. Fill that in too. Okay, right, and then we'll get you to stand right here. And then what I'm going to do is I've got to have two circles coming off of this sort of central area here. And we'll have one here that will be we use the, the Wheel of Friendship will be in there. And we'll have one here that will be our coffer that will keep our treasure in. So, like I said before, this guy's going to come and attack us. There you go, he's down. We're not 100% sure how the new purge system is going to work, so we're not really sure what we're going to do to, to combat it. So we're going to start off like this and we'll, we'll play it by ear. So, let's see, let's put all that back. Let's take some brick, because we're going to do this bit in... Um, tier 2. Alright, so let me see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is where we want to start it with. And we're going to start using stone brick triangles. And I'm going to try and rotate them so they're facing in the right direction. So we're wanting 2, and then we're going to start branching off that way, so... Let's rotate it inwards. Inwards, and then we want more of these. Go. And these. Okay, there's the outer ring on that side, and let's do the outer ring on the other side.
Right, so as you can see here, that just fits and stays above the ground and, and no more. So it's practically, practically perfect. You might want to actually bring it up a little bit. Now, obviously making all this base out of tier two is going to be very expensive. So to, to save initial cost, what I would suggest is make your outer rate ring out of the tier two, which we've got here, and then the fill in the bits in the middle with tier one, the much cheaper tier one. Because you can always come back at a later date and replace them with tier two. But just to, to get your initial crafting done, to get your initial base done, just the outside parts, because when you get hit by a purge, they only attack the outside wall. So you want the outside wall to be strong and uh, you want the the inner bit is, is not quite so important. Uh, this bit is going to be the coffer. Like, what we're, what we can do, we're going to set it up at the moment with walls around the outside of here. But walls have only got a... Oh, let me, let me just have a look. Stone brick wall. How much HP does that have? It's got 52,500 HP, whereas a foundation has... 75,000 so it might be that we can then take the if we need to we could always take this outer ring so we get it to snap and place it like that and place foundations behind it as well to give it extra extra thickness but right now we're not going to do that we're just going to go with with walls okay and i'll bring that here and we'll work our way work our way around There we go, there's the first ring. Right, so, as I've said, we we typically build this out of tier two, and uh, we need a lot, a lot, a lot of materials. So, as I've done in my other series, I've, I've put more than enough hours in this game into chopping down trees and taking out stone nodes and then crafting them up into the tier materials, so. To, to speed things up, I'm going to build the rest of this out of in creative mode. So that, that's an option available to you if you're on a single player or you're admin on a server. If you're online, obviously you won't have this option, but it'll allow you to just build without having to get the materials. So we go into enter creative mode, and then when I hit F5, you can see we've got infinite amount of each materials so i'm going to use that for for this case just because i've done too much of too much of this building already that it'll just to speed things up for you but what i'll do is i'll cut here and i'll go and do the fill in the next part and then I'll, I'll bring you back when we're ready to move to the next section okay see you soon okay we're a little bit further on so this side We've kind of done the sort of ground floor. We've got two walls up and we've got a roof on it. And for the roof, anywhere there is a square foundation, you put a square piece of ceiling. Anywhere there's a triangle, you put a triangle ceiling above it and it'll piece together in the same, the same side. I've put a door here. We've put where the wedge is. I've put a couple of walls, put a door in and uh, that, that will be the coffer section. Now this section here is going to be where the wheel is going to go. So first of all, we have to unlock the bigger wheel. So under survival, down to friend taker. And this one here is the medium size wheel of friendship that allows you to have four at once instead of just the one. Also unlocks a few other bits and bobs as well, but we'll come to that on another day. Now, this wheel is a lot bigger uh, if I do this, and then this, and I'm, I'm out of 
let me just show you. I'm out of creative mode again at the moment, so we're using real materials again. So F5, no, not five, five for that. In here, go to crafting stations, companions. There is the wheel of friendship. There's the, the lesser one. There's the medium one. So if we select that, you can see it's quite a bit bigger. And you can also just see from the sort of ghost that it kind of just goes around this inner circle here. And if we spin it around, you can see where the, the steps are. That's where the taskmaster will go. So one thing about it, it is approximately two and a half walls high. So to, to fully enclose it, you'd kind of need to have it inside three walls. But if you hold shift and scroll wheel, you can scroll it down. And when you go too far, it's going to overlap, but you bring it back that one where it's still green and it's now sunken into the foundation. And if we click go like that, it is now slightly lower. It'll still work perfectly well, but it should now be too high. We've bring it, brought it down so we can now fill in this area here. So I'll go back and I'll, I'll fill this in and I'll bring you back when that's done. Okay, see you soon. Right, brought you back. We're right at almost at the, the end of the roof. So let's, you can see they're orange, so the stability of them is starting to go down. If we put them in, I'm spinning them around so the pattern matches. And then the middle one, it's a very dark orange, but it's just enough to fill in and it's not getting obscured by the wheel and if I was to climb up the wheel you can just see the top of the wheel is basically touching the ceiling but everything fits in and it's two ceilings high okay so that's the two sections one for the wheel this one's going to have the coffer in it this will be where we'll keep all our treasure and then this will be the middle entrance. Then we'll have a second level up where we'll have our crafting stations. And we'll have some of the crafting stations down here as well. So, here is another ad little bit of advanced technique. So let me go into here. Let me just replace these outer ones by some foundations. So, stone brick foundation. Uh, Let's get the arm pointing in the forward direction. Like that. Like that. Like that. Kind of just see the arrow and no more. We'll leave the we'll leave the middle ones for now. Right. If we just stick some walls on here, so if we just stick walls in here. Where did I put that wall? In the middle of nowhere. It looks a bit on the plain side. Especially with a square. Bit, a bit slabby. So let's try and break that up by putting some pillars. So if we take those walls away, what we'll find is if we take a pillar, the pillar will only snap there's only one snap point, and that is to the centre of the foundation, which is not much use. So one way of getting round that is we put a stair down. If we put a stair down, a pillar will now snap to the top of the stair. So you can see it has now got a snap point in the centre and on the stair, but still not on the corner. So this is the pillar, the pillar trick. So it's, it's a bit complex. So we've got a foundation, we put a stair down, and we put a pillar on it. That means right on the middle, on the middle of the foundation, right at the edge. If we then put a ceiling on top of that, like that, and then put another stair coming down off of the side, copy the pillar, that'll then snap to the center of that stair, which then goes right on the corner of that foundation. The only problem is, because it's a foundation, you can't get one that goes right down to the ground. So you don't keep your all your stability. So let me just take this away. 
Let me copy that. Take that away, take that away, and let's put a ceiling coming out from there. Then we can give the ceiling stability by putting a pillar right in the middle. Right, let's put a row, let's put a row of ceilings across there. Come on, little deer, get out of the way. And we'll put pillars underneath just to give them some stability. And let's do the same thing again. So again, we can only snap to the centre. But if we put a stair, we can then put a pillar on the stair. And then if we copy the ceiling and put that up in there, and then hang another stair down, we can copy the pillar and put it there. And this time, because it's just a ceiling, we can bring it all the way down to the ground. So we can now take all this away. And we have stability. If I bring out my hammer, we've got 100, 100, 100 stability. And we've got a pillar on the end corner. Now, the quick way to make it on the other side as well, to keep it lined up, is if we copy... I need to build the hammer again. Copy the ceiling, put that on. Oh, don't put it over there. Take it across here. Like that. We can then copy the pillar. It'll go in the middle of there, which is actually on the corner of there, and then another one below it to bring it all the way to the ground. And we could do the same again here. Oh, but let's make that... No, let's line it up properly. Like that. Copy that pillar all the way down. And stick some more underneath just for extra stability. Now, if we bring a wall to back, we can put a wall in here, 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 here. Nope. Nope, still back to front. That way. And then we can get rid of these roofs at the top. Like that, like that, like that, like that, like that. And now you can see, uh, let's do the same at this side as well, let's get rid of those two and replace them with ceilings as well. Because you can't do this with foundations, you need to have a ceiling so it can go all the way down to the bottom. And get the wall. No, come on. Outer face, that way. Oh, I forgot to put the, the pillar in. Dope. Let's, let's take that away. Copy that. Put that in there. Bring it in the center. Uh, it's blocked by the wall. Take that out. Put that in. There we go. It just gives it a bit more sort of structure, looks a bit more interesting. You could do it all the way around here as well, at all these corners if you wanted to. Uh, and I think it looks a lot, lot better. And that's how you get pillars in the corners. Right. Uh, I'm going to move you. No, I'm going to move you out of the way. Because I'm going to put in some stairs in here now. So we can actually get in. Uh, what's the other? These are the other stairs. So one, two, three. Oh, we've, we've got a bit on there already. And now we can fill in these sides. Is that not... Why is that not going in?
Uh, what? Ooh, that's a bit weird. Not seen it do that before. There we go. to do here. Okay, let me go and work on the rest of the floor and uh, I'll bring you back. Okay, see you soon. Okay, we've got the snapping point issue fixed now. So because the pillars are on the corners, it was creating like a false snap point kind of thing. But what we've done is we've put the ceilings in on that first floor there and then that gives us an actual snapping point to snap our walls to so if i bring the clip the wall here we go you can see it now snaps in the correct place uh, put some stairs up to here and i've also put a couple of fence posts just around the, the edge here uh, we can potentially have some archers here or maybe some just some decorative braziers or whatever we've we've created this the next floor up but as you can see from there we've taken it in by one foundation. So if we run in the main area here, that will be the where we can extend up to the upper area. Uh, and on each side we have another circular base, but one foundation smaller, just to give it a bit of a bit of interest so instead of being one big tall column. And again I've put fence foundations all around the outside here. And that obviously stops anybody climbing up. And we have exactly the same at the other side. Bottom row all walls, top row all windows, so we can start letting some light in. If we go down the stairs, we can see here, that's where the stairs up to the first floor is. So this can be a crafting or storage area. And then in here we have our friendship room with the wheel of friendship. And in here we're going to put the coffer. So the coffer is where we're going to store all our treasure that we collect in Age of War. So let's first of all learn that. So here it is here, treasure coffer, which allows you to make treasure coffer with your construction hammer. And you can also turn piles of coins into coin piles for putting around your treasure room. So let's unlock that. In fact, let's come out of creative mode so we can use the actual materials or well, we maybe don't have enough actually let's just have a look uh, where is that under decorations clan coffer so we need 15 shaped wood and we've only got eight on us so let's run outside that should be more on the shell back do you have any more you do indeed uh, we need another seven Okay, let's try that again. So this room will be our treasure room. So we go to decorations, clan, treasure coffer. And you can see the weird pattern and the pattern extends to anything within that pattern will be classed as your clan's um, treasure. So even if we put it in the, the center of the room here, you can see it actually goes right out through the corridor just to the, you can just see the yellow edge just at the door at the other side of the corridor. So actually anything in this area would be classed as our treasure as well. But we're going to stick it down here, yeah, kind of roughly in the middle. And there we go. So this is the start of the treasure coffer system. So anything that you place down, the, the, the treasures that you pick up, you can place them down in this room and they will be counted by our accountant here and other items you place in in here so gold coins silver coins gold and silver bars as well get placed inside the the coffer chest itself and this guy will start tallying up the treasure 
And then as we're led to believe, come chapter two, we'll be able to exchange that treasure for a purge. We'll have people come in to purge it. Now, uh, like I said before, these foundations here, these have got 75,000 HP. The, the walls only have 52,500. So what we might end up doing is we might have a wall, we might have a wall, then another foundation in this block here, and then another wall. So that it'll have to go through three layers to get into here. But uh, because we don't really know what's going to happen with the purge system yet, I'm just going to hold off for it just now. We'll, we'll go over this room, but we'll now have to start collecting treasure and get it in there. But that's, that's the base of our... Um, let me see, where can I go? Up here. Oh, can I get on the edge of the wall? Up you get. And balance. No, I can't balance. Right, let me just go into creative mode again, and then I can fly. And you can see the basic layout of the base that we have so far. So, central area with two floors. We've got circles on either side with the, the wheel of friendship in the bottom of that one, the coffer in the bottom of that one, and then the upper stairs will have our crafting benches in and perhaps in these central bit as well. And then we've got a bit out the front. So that's going to do it for today, but next time we're going to have to put a roof on these areas. Not sure if we'll put a third floor or a sec yeah, a third floor. We've got one, two, and then maybe a third floor on the, the central bit. We'll, we'll see, but we'll, we'll work on that next time. So that's it. We've got the entrance there. comes up, go in that door, and then you can get around everything else from there. Okay, that's going to do for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye now.